collection Boucheron. Yeah, me neither. If you asked me a few years ago, I would have said, what, what you talking about? Um, I discovered uh, Boucheron, I know, they're not really that popular in the men's aisle, to be quite honest. Um, however, I was very intrigued when I saw this. In this lineup, um, this, this hobby is always great. You discover from different various places at YouTube, uh, Fragrantica, Base Notes, Bloggers, um, ads maybe, uh, something like that. And then you stumble upon discounters that have a whole line of these and they have like an amber-based one, a vanilla-based one, an oud-based one. You pique my interest. Now, these type of lines, you know, on YouTube, the two big boys are getting a lot of press, Dior Chanel, and um, they do have a great, great uh, high-end lineup. Um, I, I can't poo-poo on them. They, they are well-deserved as far as the press. Um, however, all these brands, the Dolce Cabanas, the YSLs, the, the Hugo Bosses, um, Armani with the Armani Privé lineup, uh, Herrera has a really good lineup that's not getting much press. They're very hard to find, um, even to get the samples and stuff. So um, they don't really, Givenchy has actually a lineup that I'm really interested in, but um, this is in that realm. Um, this is a line that really their men's line doesn't really get much press on YouTube. So why would their high-end lineup get any other press so i'm very intrigued and this is my first of the brand so i'm very interested this is their oud based one let's uh discover this one together let's go Fragrance family, welcome to the Robes OA channel. I'm your host, Mark. Today we're unboxing and giving a first impression on Oud de Carthage, Oud de Carthage by the house of Boucheron. Now this is a brand, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I've spoken about this brand at all on my channel, actually. Zero mentions. I don't own a bottle from them, except for this one now. Um, so I'm very intrigued. This is from their higher echelon line. It's called La Collection Boucheron. So very straightforward. Um, they have one that's amber-based. Uh, I hear it smells like um, Hermes Essence Am Nargile. So I gotta get my nose on that one. They have a vanilla one, Veni de Zanzibar, I believe. Um, another one that I have to check out. So depending on how good this unboxing goes, we may see a lot more of these in the future on the Robzoid channel. This lineup, Chopar has a high-end lineup too that I wanna check out. So these are little known brands in the men's aisle. Um, so if you're new here, hey, thanks for watching. Hey, subscribe to support the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything in the future. I'm also all over social media under uh, the handle, my YouTube handle, Robes Await. Keep tabs on behind the scenes stuff, including Center of the Day, Center of the Night, post new purchases and what I'm working on for this channel in particular. If you have a Facebook account, you can also join us on Fragrance Guru Nation. That is my Facebook group uh, where we have 18,000 members where we discuss fragrances, new releases, uh, people buy, sell, swap, split fragrances on my group. Um, you can discover new YouTubers, old YouTubers. They post the link to their uh, new videos. Just a great source of information if you're in this hobby like I am. So. Let's move on to, of course, the topic of the day, and that's Oud de Carthage by Boucheron, a 2017 release. So the Boucheron line for men hasn't really done anything in the 2000s, honestly. It's been very quiet as far as buzz or anything. And this line got my attention back in 2019 when they started going into discounters. And I'm talking about their high-end line, this one right here. And never heard of these through research or anything. Um, they do have some beautiful bottles. I Googled that real quick when I saw these at discounts. I was like, ooh, bottles are nice. We'll see in real life how they look. Um, I want to get the vanilla one and the amber one if this oud one goes well. Amber is next on the, uh, on the hit list, we'll say. Um, so we'll see today, first of many, maybe from the house of Boucheron. Um, it'll give me, this will give me a good idea what kind of quality we're getting in. This is a brand that I have hardly any experience. I think I've smelt like one or two of their lower end stuff for men, uh, but nothing high end from this line. So very minimal testing in regards to my nose. 
So I do have something on skin today, so I'm not going to put this on my skin, but I will put it on a test strip to check it out. So let's unbox this sucker. Let's see the presentation. I'm very intrigued. Now, Oud, just gonna wait till that's unboxed. Now, Oud, as a note, very complex. Um, a lot of brands uh, pair Oud with, of course, Rose and Saffron. I don't think I saw those notes. Oh, this bottle, oh my, you guys, uh, this bottle. See, this is why I like first impression unboxings. This is my first time looking at this. Bottles heavy, very, wow, 125 mils. Very heavy, beautiful, simplistic. Wow, they even have Collection Boucheron right on the atomizer here on the neck of it. Caps very heavy. What does this remind me of? It reminds me of a brand, but oh wow. Um, okay, so very impressed. <laughs> very impressed with the presentation, um, but it's all about the juice inside. So like I was saying, Oud always paired with Saffron and Rose. And from what I re recall, this has none of those. It's Oud and I, I believe a lot of um, like honey, vanilla and things like that. So uh, Tonka and, and things like that. So maybe darker, sweeter notes. So let's see. First try. Oud, the Cartage. The nose behind this is Rapion, by the way. All-star pet for me. Sweet, okay, okay, it's got some sweetness, but it also has some darkness to it. Off the top, lots of woods. Um, it has a vanillic sweetness. It has some incense, so woods and incense, very nice incense, has some, some smokiness to it. It's almost like a cold incense, but it almost feels like somebody blew out a match. With some woods, uh, definitely some woods there, but it also has some vanillic qualities. Um, a little bit of a leathery touch too, wow. Um, good blend. By the way, this is not a sticker at the front. Um, it actually is, um, it's a, um, it's actually uh, something that got sticked on, but uh, it's not a sticker. Um, almost like, um, I don't know. I don't know if it's metal or plastic. I feel like it's metal, but anyway. All right, so early thoughts. Really um, good blend, uh, Rapion, Rapion uh, all over this, very good blend. It's got some honeyed sweetness. Um, it's got some, almost a cinnamon-like spice. Vanillic, definitely. It's got some some smoke to it, but not that much. Um, like I said, a uh, burnt out match sounds about right. Um, has some some woody qualities. Oud, <sighs> westernized oud. I'm gonna say that. There's nothing barnyardy. There's nothing crazy here as far as the uh, woods go. It's more about the blend itself, but it has some some interesting characters here. Incense, honey. Oud, leathery, nothing animalic here, nothing medicinal as far as the oud goes. It's not that woody. It's more It's more about the blend. I, I feel like there's cinnamon in this thing. Poof. Well blended. Would I say this is, I don't know what this goes for as far as retail goes, probably super expensive. I would say probably Canadian, probably 250, give or take. Um, harder to find. My early thoughts, again, this is only on a piece of paper, I would say a high-end designer release, lower-end niche release. Honestly, this is where this is going. Is it anything new, exciting? No. The blend, pretty good. Am I excited to wear it? Yeah. Um, am I disappointed? No, I feel like I will be looking out for the amber-based one that are saying that it smells like the Hermes Essence I'm always That's one of my favorite uh, fragrances of all time, honestly. So if I can get my hands on the amber one, I probably will off this strip. It's a strong release. Um, there, you, there you have it. Oud de Cartage from a line that really doesn't get much press 
on these YouTube channels. The bottle itself, 10 out of 10. Straight up, um, that plaque looks good. Again, this is not a sticker. Um, it, it might be a sticker on top of the plaque, but uh, definitely nicely uh, executed. We got the gold here. It even has, you know, Collection Boucheron right here on the neck. Um, and it says Boucheron Paris on top here. The cap is very heavy. Atomizers, good as gold. Um, very heavy glass. Really, really good. And the scent itself intrigues me. Cinnamon, leathery, incense, kind of woody base of a fragrance with, a, of course, a vanillic. Do I, do I want to say tonka bean? I don't feel like saying tonka bean because I don't feel like any almond-like quality here. No cherry-like quality, but it has like a honeyed vanillic feel to the fragrance. Very nicely blended. Um, Rapion excellent nose and you can definitely tell that a, a great nose uh, did this one so now that you heard my take uh wow i would like to hear anybody that's tried this um, please comment below let us know what you think about this line uh should i be delving into it i think the amber one's going to be next on my hit list to be honest and then third in line the vanilla uh will be uh third um if everything goes well I think I'm going to continue to delve into in these bottles when they lined up together. I think they're going to look great too. Um, so please uh, share with us what you think about the House of Boucheron. If you have tried any, um, this is definitely something that doesn't get much press on YouTube. And as always, a greater pour fragrance will make a lasting impression. <laughs> Choose your wood-based fragrance wisely. Thanks for watching YouTube. Have a good one.